get hold that up, stuff together. Hold up. So how does how does hip hop help you get into healthcare? I, I guess I need to know the correlation. So all right. So <laughs> the the medical practice that I that I I, I started as a consultant. Um, well, long story short, the the doctors that owned the medical practice were fans of hip hop. Okay, I was gonna say they so, like heavy in the voice. <laughs> so then, so one thing led to another, and through the conversations, they found out I did, you know, I did websites, I had a tech background, and I started consulting them. And then because of my um because of my executive background, you know, head A and R at at LaFace and at um Motown Polygram, I kind of um as I got more and more into their practice, um, it was running just like a group of record companies. They just had different service lines. They had, you know, you know uh, dialysis units and vascular access center. They had um, kidney clinics, different, but it was really organized. Um, it felt to me just like when I was at Polygram, it's like, okay, you know, Def Jam specializes in this and, you know, um, Island specializes in this and this is, so it was just service lines. So, they actually brought me in as a consultant. They asked me. They asked me to run the um, the whole division. I didn't want to do that because I didn't have a back background in um, healthcare at the time. So I just I ended up being um, CTO of the medical group, and I kind of helped them revamp all of all of their all their infrastructure, everything from their their networks, all their workstations, their voice over IP, their branding, um, their site to site VPN, all that stuff. I just what they kept. Asking me, can you do this? Can you fix this? Can you do this? Can you? And then I just kind of like, you know, it's like the funny thing is, it's what we do in music. It's what we do in hip hop. We take problems and we solve them. We take, you know, even from scratching, we take things that you're not necessarily supposed to do and figure out how to make it work. So to me, it was just problem solving as you go. Nice, nice. So. I guess for the rest of the um, panelists, I did want to ask what translates from hip hop into what you do now. And Chuck, this is kind of a gimme for you, but uh, more more for Mims, really. I guess um, you know how does um, hip hop translate into tech, or do, are there any lessons that you've learned that you brought over to? Um, that um, you know what I, I would say if you, because um, it's funny. I, I just, I mean, I, I've been obviously uh, in the cryptocurrency for quite some time, blockchain for quite some time as well. And, and what I like to say is that we talk about rock stars, like r the rapper uh, for, for, from well in, from the 80s into, you know, the 2000s, even to now is considered the rock star. Um, but now more and more you start to see these tech entrepreneurs pop up on the scene and, and these guys are, are legitimately like rock stars. They, they move around like rock stars. And, um, I mean, Chuck said something that was, uh, was I guess, key is, you know, a lot of people in hip hop haven't accepted uh, technology, so to speak, or, or even from an investment standpoint. Um, but the truth is that, you know, some of the individuals in, in tech now um, are, be, are honestly, part, I mean, partying, becoming the new uh, hip hop artists. They're becoming the new stars. So um, people are paying more and more attention um, to the technology space because of that. Um, the, for me, I mean, that's obviously not what my passion is. I think I'm still more music driven um, and I want to solve a problem in my industry. So because of that, um, it leads me into technology. And because, um, like Eddie said, I have a passion for it uh, from young. So, you know, when you combine the two, it's a no brainer. All right. All right. Chuck, any, any um, lessons you, you've learned that you've brought over to, um, you know, to all hip hop or, I mean, cause you're more media than tech and I, you know, I understand that, but it's definitely some lessons that can apply. I mean, look, well, first of all, let me just say, you know, kind of echoing what Eddie F said, you know, you know, I was, you know, you take these things for granted. It's weird, you know, but you take these things for granted, the Apple IIe in the house, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we just had an Apple IIe randomly. And growing up, when I went to college, I went to my school because they had a Mac lab. And I left one school and went to another school largely because they had a Mac lab, you know. And I knew that was associated with publishing. And so a lot of the things, 
and I and I have to check my privilege in a lot of ways because I forget, you know, stealing all the programs, <coughs> excuse me, learning how to steal programs off of those school computers that helped me start my company and all hip hop as well. So I take a lot of stuff for granted at this point. And so my immersion in tech was largely based around other people's products. So kind of where I am right now, where I wanna go is where we are the ones creating those products, not just being early adopters to someone else's product. Because as you already know, we, we blow up. To, I mean, we have, it's like, we have literally, since hip hop's inception, blown up other people's products from day one and, and figured out ways to make these things cool, not even their intended purposes. So we have to really get on the ball from a tech standpoint, whether it's getting funding from our own people or others, allies, if you will, or, um, or really fi figuring out how, way, how, how to bootstrap it. Because that's where somewhat it's been difficult for all hip hop because our tech plays and our risks take the, ch the times when we have taken those risks, we may or may not have been fully equipped to handle it or, or evolve it from you know, something that we might have bootstrapped. So um, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, we've learned a lot, you know, and uh, I think we still have, we have a lot in the tank, but as we move forward, we wanna make sure that those relate, the relationships that we have in tech are somehow able to um, pay dividends for us. You know, we've, we've got friends everywhere. So I, you know, like Mims, you know, again, things that you take for granted. I mean, me and Greg, we go to all types of uh, tech and publisher related conferences. I mean, it's like a no brainer almost, you know what I mean? But I think breaking through is a different story. Yeah, and you mentioned um, funding and access to capital. Uh, you know, we, we can talk offline about um, some equity crowdfunding plays that might be a way for us to um, get you some funding if you, you're looking for it. But um, uh, yeah, I think um, the fact that we just need to educate our community more on what's available, and I won't get into the Jobs Act and what that means and how you can invest. But um, just know that if you want to invest and you're not a credit, a credit investor, there, there are ways to do it and you can. Right. Uh, support the companies that um, that you like and uh, you know are patron of. Um, we got about 20 minutes. I'm going to open it up to the audience for some questions. Everybody should have the ability to talk now. If anybody wants to go off mute and ask a question, um, now's a good time. Hey, um, this is William Jackson. I'm down here in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm enjoying the, the discussion really a lot of valuable information. I'm, I'm in the area of education. I teach with the school district, but I've been involved in technology for quite a few years. But I wanted to know from your opinion, what are the, some of the strategies that we can apply in our communities to get kids involved in learning how to code and learning how to design and learning how to build web pages and involved in the areas of STEM and STEAM development? Well, I think the um, the best way is to get them in a program and, and, and start young, man. You can never, ever start too young. You know, my little, my godson, well, he's not little anymore. He's literally graduating from high school now, <laughs> which is hilarious. But he's, um, you know, he, he's been doing AI, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, since he was 10. You know what I mean? So he was doing certain types of little robots and cars and things that responded to voice prompts for, for, for years. And so the best way to do it is to, to make, it, um, make it cool and, and make it, uh, 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 you know, create the atmosphere um, around the, you know, technology early. My daughter hasn't quite grasped onto it, but, you know, she's been in Girls Who, um, Girls Who Code, I should say, excuse me. Girls Who Code and um, Black Girls Rock has an offshoot that's uh, similar as well. So we have to, and, and also, and the other thing I will say is, you know, finding a safe space for them to do this as well. Because other environments can be very hostile and, um, and intimidating and daunting for young kids. 
And, um, you know, yeah, that's my two cents. But, I mean, now more than ever, we need this. And we need to, if we're going to survive in the, in the world to come, and the, really the world that's here, we have to really um, involve our young people. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because, you know, being a teacher, I'm sorry. All I see is in no, the classroom, you know, kids just on programs, you know, to help them read and write, which is good. But there's not concerted efforts within the school system that actually teach them design principles and, and you know, things that they're going to be, how to think innovative. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to get as many ideas as possible from, you know, people like y'all and that's been in the community that's using technology and, and touching lives. It's got to be like English, math, you know, just got to be like everything else, you know, everything else. Jim, just got to be. Yeah, I think, I, I was not to interrupt, Chuck, I think the importance is that, uh, is building that cool factor. I think the problem with, with uh, you know, a, lo a lot of, uh, I guess, kids from where I grew up and even in my time is that we don't, we, we don't understand the, the certain career choices. So for me, um, while I had the opportunity to go to a, a decorated university, I decided to be a musician. And there's nothing wrong with that because obviously it worked out for me. Um, but, you know, with, with, I don't, I'm not sure the age, grade, uh, age uh, uh, of your children or the kids in your, your community, but it's, a, it's the cool fact that there's innovation in everything. I mean, from video games to, uh, to you know, web, uh, uh, mobile-based apps. I mean, everything that we touch now in life has innovation behind it. And if these kids understand that they can be at the forefront of technology and innovation in the near future, because it doesn't take that long to get in front of it. Mark Zuckerberg, I mean, uh, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg uh, was in high school when he created, I mean, college when he created Facebook. So it's not, right. these are not things that, that are intangible. These are things that they can reach even now. Some kids can code now and create applications that will either increase their finances or, or in, increase their brain, brain power. Okay. And, and I was, one of the things I, I wanted to add something onto that too. Um, I come from an education um, family, my mother and father teaches, dad, guidance counselor, things like that. But um, one of the things that I've seen in, in coding in the last, you know, 10, 15 years um, is one games, gamifying things. And then the other thing is um, whichever age group it is that you're targeting, find out what they like like whatever apps they're using and a lot of times the lead in like kind of like just just um leading them in by building a clone of something like a lot of people would you know if they use like snapchat all the time or if they use instagram you know if just selling them on you know build an instagram clone or you know a lot of kids would be interested if they could build their own instagram even if it's not as sophisticated as instagram but if they right. thought it was something like that that might spark their interest things that they use um okay. and i see a lot of coding classes teach stuff like that um but they don't necessarily put it out there like that until you get in the class and then you know oh i'm building a i'm building an amazon clone but you can probably just put it out there like that okay. yeah i mean i started uh, i deconstructed all types of websites to learn coding i, I didn't go to school for it at all so that, and that kind of dovetails into hip hop too, you know, because hacking is, you know, basically just like Jack and a beat, you know, um, you know, you get that source code chuck before, you know, websites got complicated, you copy and paste and, you know, chop it up, you know, you figure out reverse engineer it. Change the graphics, boom, there you go. That's it, that's it. So um, uh, yeah, thanks for that. Anybody? <laughs> I appreciate it. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I had uh, a sort of boring question, if I may, um, for, the, for the gentleman. And may I thank everybody, actually, um, for their very valuable input. Um, so sort of I'm interested in the legal side of things. So when you are uh, uh, sort of thinking about your day-to-day -day work and sort of looking at contracts, what sort of things sort of stand out for you from the legal side of things? Are they things like indemnities or limiting liability? What is a um, you know something which uh, you know you really, you really look out for when you're uh, considering the legal side of things? NDAs. NDA, okay. That's that's what I look up. A lot of people have similar ideas, um, and 
I get a lot of NDAs. I give a lot of NDAs, but mm -hmm. I find that um, mutual works best because a lot of people have similar ideas. You believe it or not, um, that's what I found in the in the tech space, in the coding space. Um, and it's a little bit of a tricky. It's a tricky dance. It's a it's a weird issue. It's hard to it's hard to balance between protecting an idea and being first to market. You know, and I'm sure you know I don't have anywhere near as much experience as like you know Chuck and the other guys. But that's just my you know my experience. I'm sure they have way more experience in that realm. Well, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, Mims probably knows more about this from a tech perspective, but everything is in uh, paperwork, basically. Uh, NDAs, there's contracts, there's all types of things that you have to sign. I mean, look, I was down, in, I was talking to TI, and they didn't even want to talk to me anymore because I was talking in so much quote unquote code. Like, they were like, uh, all right, just send us the NDA. And then we, so we could talk, talk, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I mean, that was, I was being very, I thought very forthcoming, but to them, they, they wanted the whole shebang. I was just like, nah, I mean, that's my, that's my bro. But I mean, come on, when we're talking business, you know how this game is. And if you know, if you look at the, um, the Facebook story, you know, it's, it's grimy. Yeah. Yeah. Always protect yourself. And, and it, it protects other people, too, because um, you don't want to be in a situation where it's a misunderstanding and end up in court. Thanks, Andy. Uh, any other questions? Um, I, I, I got a question for Mims. Um, from a, from, well, never mind. Forget that. Forget no, that. come on, Chuck. No, we'll... no, I was just going to say, music, <laughs> music you know, I, I'll, I'll give you a little clue. In. Music is special. So that's a, that's a special, you know, there's special legalities attached to that music wise. You know, I mean, I re it's really not a non question. It's more of a statement to say that I'm sure that what we're doing is, uh, is, is, you know, you just got to protect yourself on that end as people are creating music. On yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we, we pride ourselves on, on original content. So we, we, we pride ourselves on the creation of original content. Um, I mean, there's a lot obviously that comes with that, there's a lot of meat and potatoes behind, uh, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a, 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 a we paid a lot of, of, of attorneys to, to figure out how we can navigate in the space, no different than the Spotify's and the Apple Music's, et cetera, et cetera. But we do pride ourselves on original music content. Um, I know Eric Mendelson is on, he can probably give more light as to um, how we navigate, especially in the world that we're in. But, um, you know, it, it, is, it is a tricky space, so. So what do you guys think about the verses, uh, the Instagram battles? Um, you know, I hear that, you know, they want to shut it down, you know, royalty and rights management, you know, people looking at, you know, all these millions of people being on and, you know, certain people not getting checks. Uh, so <laughs> any, any thoughts yeah. on that? I mean, I put a culture or put a money? What's, what's the point? I have tons of thoughts on that. But first of all, they shouldn't shut it down. But um, they should just monetize it. As soon as, you know, um, from when D Nice first did his first quarantine, club quarantine, I was already thinking, you know, I don't, you guys might know people at, you know, Instagram like that, but I don't know them like that. I was like, I was like, they should, um, what's the thing I'm looking for? I was like, yo, they should just Pandora this thing right now. They should just, <laughs> they should just put ads in it in between. Or if you want to subscribe, pay a fee and let people and just and track the songs. You know, they can track the songs enough to cut it off or to say, you you know, your copyright infringement on, on Facebook. So they can track the songs. So track the songs and monetize it and let people go. And that, and that extends into the versus thing. Same thing. Just, you know, I'm sure... Some brand wants to get in front of 200,000, 400,000, you know, live. It's, at this point, it's television. It is, to, it's IG, you know, IGTV. It is television. It's TV. Well, they did have the Ciroc thing with, you know, <laughs> the man, you know but, so, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, they kind of tried to do it, but, you know. 
But I mean, they need to, they need to, that's why I said they need to Pandora it. Like if it's not, you know, instead of, instead of cutting people off, just, you know, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> and it's a minute of, yeah. you know, and then that money goes to yeah. the people, whatever the songs, you know, they could track the songs. It's not, put it like this. It's not like they don't have the technology. It's not like they don't have like, you know, a couple of hundred programmers that could be like, okay, let's track these songs. Let's, you know, and let's pay a portion or whatever, you know. And then if you don't want the ads and you don't want the commercial break, let people pay. And that wouldn't be hard for them to set up. I hope they do it. I hope somebody, if they're not doing it, or they, I hope they do it. Yeah, I, I was hoping to see, you know, Revolt or Title, you know, step up and take it over. You know, not, nothing against Instagram, but, you know, they, that's my two cents, you know. They should, but. Completely different platform, though, so. A different platform, different, it'll be a different vibe and, you know, some technical challenges, but it could be done. I think this. I think this. This is an opportunity for them to build their own platform. To be honest with you, I mean, I get that you needed Instagram to be able to start it up and be that 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 engine to it. But now, because it's taken on a life of its own, I think it's important for them to 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 create, um, especially as a black entrepreneur, so to create their own platform. Um, and I also think that that uh, the problems that exist with, uh, I guess the the infringement or, or whatever you you may have with music playing is, is a problem that the music industry has to, to, to step up and address. And it's been a problem that's been plaguing the industry for quite some time. Um, I don't think the music industry is innovative enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why we keep getting into these situations where, uh, you know, we can't play our, even the music we own, we can't play it on certain platforms. And that's because the music industry never cared about innovation. All they cared about was ripping off uh, artists. And they still, and you know, that's still the mind frame they're in. So I think once they get out of that and start to uh, understand that that innovation is here, technology is here, it's going to take over. Um, then you know, then we'll have a, a lot easier future as it comes to playing music on on some of these apps. Yeah, and it's unappreciated too. That's the other thing. You know, it's 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 always, and that just goes back to what I was saying earlier. We just have to engage our our youth properly. Um, I don't think I'm going to create the next Facebook at this point in my life, um, and, not, and nor do I want to, you know what I mean? But just to say that um, the, the, true, the, true, the people who have no boundaries, and I, I do believe we all are limitless, but I just think that it starts with the kids. It, it does, absolutely. I just, I just wanted to add something to all of what, what was just said. Um, a couple of things. The music business has always been slow with technology. The second thing is the whole shutdown, the whole, you know, restrictions, it never works. If you look at the history of music versus technology, music loses every time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you, I don't care. Facebook, Instagram, they could cut it off. It's going to like, you know, okay, we napsed all over again. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it's going to be somewhere. They're not going to stop it. They might as well embrace it. Um, but I do want to add something. It's something funny that I just realized this maybe 10 years ago, maybe more than that. Um, Doug Morris did an ad in, um, not an ad, but an interview in, um, I think it was New York Times or somewhere. And he said something and it just dawned on me. Um, he said, you know, a lot of people think, and I'm paraphrasing, it's not exact quote. He said, a lot of people think with the MP3s and the downloads, like we kind of, we missed it. He said, it's not that we missed it. We're not technology people. He said, it's like if I take my dog to the vet and my dog is sick and the vet says, okay, come in here and grab a scalpel and start. He's like, I don't know. And it hit me that, oh, snap, you know, we're technology people. We're, we're like music people and DJs and, you know, and artists and we, like we just the culture, hip hop culture, we've always kind of been into technology and we kind of, but a lot of these, um, the executives, the high up, they don't, they, they really don't know. Cause for the longest time I was like, when, when iTunes and all that came out and I know iTunes from when it was sound jam before Apple even bought it and turned it into iTunes. And all this time I was always thinking, why don't record companies 
build their own store. Like, this is like, it doesn't take, they spend tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm like, it doesn't take that much to, and not, and not build your own store to not have iTunes or to not have these other platforms. Just to be like, you know, to me it was like, you go to the supermarket, you buy Jif peanut butter, but then they got, you know, whatever supermarket brand, no frills too. So I felt like, why don't they build it? And, it's, and they didn't build it because they didn't get it. They just, it's not that they didn't even, it's not that they were stupid. They just, they weren't well, really technology people. And they really didn't know that I could just pay somebody a hundred grand to build a store and we could like take that money, you know, get that money and still do Apple and all stuff. So I think there's a blind spot there. And I think it's still there with these record companies. Yeah. You know like, what? I'm, oh, oh, sorry. sorry man. I just wanted to add, add on a point to that is that um, the biggest issue is that um, that old school mind frame of thinking, see, there's two businesses in the music industry. Yeah. Um, the, the business we see is selling music. And then the second business is lawsuits. So we, we, we tend to forget that, they, that the music industry makes the majority of its money in, in, in the courtrooms. Right, um, right. And, and that's something that's always going to take place. And it's an old school way of thinking. And, and like you said, it's always going to be some, something that comes along and, and uh, builds a way around it. But, um, you know, that's how they're making money. That's how they've always made money, whether they're robbing artists or whether they're, you know, trying to oh, fight for publishers. royalty. <laughs> Robert, like, exactly. like man so, like let me let me just say this i i haven't seen i haven't seen jimmy Iveen nor dre since they did the beach deal but I, say, <laughs> but I said when i see them not even the beats forget the beats hardware but this little the, the little streaming company that they bought in like do you know how much money streaming basically resuscitated the whole music business the whole music business and these guys really don't get credit for like spearheading that but that little that little thing apple buying that streaming company and turning it into apple music and then you know spotify and streaming which now streaming is like all the revenue has totally turned the whole music business around but yeah. my point all, all is the oh, wait oh, sorry they should have done, for, they should have done it for the music before industry. that you know what I mean? My point is, what if these guys never did that? What if they didn't have beats? What if they, they would still be trying to sell physical product and they would still be like limping along, trying to still fighting all the companies, like you said, <laughs> suing everybody. Mm -hmm. They still suing and I, everybody. And so there's like, man, I, I, there was a point after, I, after being at record companies, you know how they have a structure or had an old structure of it would be the head of the label, be like the head of a and r and at a point it was like the head of promotions. Like those were like kind of like the two big arms. It was the music and getting it on the radio. And I, I was at a mindset where there needs to be three legs now. It needs to be the music. It needs to be whatever of radio, but there needs to be a whole, like a person that's really that same counterpart as a head of AR or the head of, of promotions and marketing, they need to be a head of technology that's just as important, that's right there at the top level. Because um, these music companies, I feel like they don't know what to do, you know, in terms of innovating and going, you know, they're making money now, but they're making money from streaming and suing. But then now, what's mm -hmm. next? Big companies get very complacent when they're making a lot of money, thinking it's not going to change. And then, uh, you know, a young upstart comes and disrupts, you know? Yep. Just well, shut it all down, Uber style. <laughs> Put everybody out of business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are right at 7.30. I did want to, um, since we started a little bit late, um, just ask one more question to the, to the panelists, give everybody another opportunity just to um, just speak and have their say. Uh, based on your industry where you are right now uh, and talking to someone who will want to get in and be you know potentially the next all hip-hop or um, the next creator app or um, the next CTO what do you tell that young person who wants to get to where you are and um, you know just you know any words of advice or you know uh, can, you know constructive uh, criticism they could give 
Uh, oh, go ahead, Chuck. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I, th I think it's, it's real simple. Um, master your zone of wherever, wherever you stay, master that area. Align yourself with people that are smart and intelligent and open-minded. Continue to work with those people. Um, don't be afraid to be disruptive. Don't be afraid to step on some toes. Uh, don't, I mean, respectfully, obviously, but don't be afraid to find your own lane, pioneer. You know, the one thing I'll say, you know, we've been around for so long, you know, it's some, sometimes it's mind blowing, but when I remember when we first started, you know, Russell Simmons would be, cur was literally cursing us out because we were sending messages to his two-way pager that was news and information that he at first didn't want to hear and didn't want to get. Literally, like, hated us. You know, after a while, he said, uh, I want to invest in you. You know what I mean? So my point is, is don't be afraid. Be fearless. And, you know, the reason why Greg and I work so well together is because he is so extremely tech savvy. And me, you know, I'm an early adopter and I'm like, I'm cool with it and I'm still working my way through that. But, you know, we work together because I'm a, more, a bit more on the creative side and the, you know, I'm out and about more. And then we, and then we connect things in that way. So that's, that's my opinion. You know, everyone, no one will know everything, you know, and that's the, that's the one thing we failed to really mention about Jay-Z, not so much in a tech capacity, but he's always surrounded himself with really smart people, really smart business people, and people that can sort of tell him what to do. And even, even on the investment side, if you Google him, he is making strides in, in tech. Same, same with people like Nas. So that's what I would say, you know, stay educated, complete, completely immerse yourself in your lane, and then continue to grow with people that are um, like-minded or complementary to what you're doing. Good, Chuck. And, and I, I'm, you know, shout out to Queensbridge Ventures. Um, you know, now I'm going to track him down for one of these soon. <laughs> so, uh, um, I, I think the, the word disruptive to me stands out the most. Um, and I think uh, even the path I'm on is, is to be disruptive in the industry. I mean, I am not a coder. And I wish, I'd, I wish obviously, I'd, I need to take the time out to become that. But for anyone out there that's just getting started, I say in this business, I feel like, that's where you should start. Start off in coding, and then with with an understanding of what you can code, um, then it then it trickles into business. And one of the biggest, obviously, mistakes that I think a lot of people make in life is when they actually take their talents and go work for a big corporation. Um, I believe that if you if if you have the ability to code or create, be creative in that space, the next thing you should learn is the business aspect, which is equity um, and building something for yourself. Even if you do decide to take a job with a big corporation, which is fine. You should always keep a pa stay passionate about uh, what you want to create and align yourself with people to see to have that passion become visible. Um, and I think that if you can do that, then you you'll disrupt. For anyone that has the same skin color as myself, it's it's a lot harder, obviously, because we don't the VCs don't open up to give us that that big check that we always want. Um, which is why I know uh, Dennis, you mentioned crowdfunding. I think that's one of my next steps is to get into that world, not only to raise funds, but to allow uh, other people who, don't, who are non-accredited the opportunity to invest in companies that they can't. Um, so I, a lot of this stuff to me leads into being disruptive. Um, and as long as you can stay on that path, um, not, not everyone will get in the door, but if one of us does, um, then, then that's, to me, those numbers uh, you know, start to increase and increase. So. All right, so um, just a quick note before I pass to Eddie. Mims, we should definitely talk after this. <laughs> but um, sure. if anybody has a side hustle and they want to take that to the next level and they don't know how to build an app, that's what we're for, our organization, Blacks and Technology. So um, definitely seek us out. I mean, it's, it's a bunch of um, Black nerds waiting to build and make stuff. So <laughs> don't let the fact that you don't know stop you from you know being that next Mark Zuckerberg. All right. Uh, Eddie, um, any advice for you? Um, well, on that note, what you just said, I need to talk to everybody. Everybody on this panel, I need to talk to you after. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is um, just to um, kind of add on to what Mims was saying. I think that um, 
if you want to, um, I think it's, I always tell, I tell this to all my friends. I'm like, it's, it's cool to have a job. It's cool to work, but let that be the fuel to whatever your passion is, whatever you're trying to build, whatever you're trying, don't get stuck. Right? Like, like have, even if you have to do that to bridge, to get to whatever your dream is or whatever you're trying to build for yourself or your company or your project or whatever it is, let that, you know, fuel, fuel that. Um, the other thing is, uh, I would just say, just learn is again, extension of what he was saying about coding, learn as much as you can about the, um, you know, the tools of what it is that you, the passion of what you want to follow. Just try and learn as much of it about it as you can. Um, and then, try, you know, there's a lot of things that we do, at least from the hip hop generation. I've seen, you know, whether it's, whether it's music, whether it's creating our own fashion, our own jeans, you know, there's a lot of things. A lot of times you could take something that's already out there, but it's not addressing a really a specific need that kind of like speaks to either you know, your culture, your, you know, your ethnicity, your, you know, your neighborhood, your town, what, and you, a lot of times you can take that and say, hey, you know, nobody's making, you know, Levi's been making jeans forever, but they weren't making, you know, jeans that, you know, fit us the way we wanted them to fit us. You know, we had to get a certain style or whatever. So then to have a line of whether it was, you know, cross colors or then, you know, Sean John or Rockaway mm -hmm. or whatever, and then people made millions of dollars because just filled the void of a need that goes for um you know all hip hop you know just 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 servicing us. There's hundreds of millions of people. There's hundreds of millions of fans of culture, hip hop culture. You know whatever it is, whatever the interest is. And I'm using hip hop as an example, but um. You know, there's a lot of things out here that have been kind of like redone and reworked and re remixed or redone for a new generation. Um, shoot, even, even Instagram has the Polaroid, <laughs> you know, kind of logo. It's the digital version of, you know, of Polaroid, you know. So I would just say um, to just kind of wrap all that up, find a passion, follow the passion, and most importantly, don't give up. Because a lot of the, a lot of the, the puffs, the Jay Z's, you know, Beyonce was in a group that got dropped from a label, then got a new deal. You know, Nisha Keys is a lot of, a lot of the superstars had super failures before they became big. So you gotta be persistent, and I'm sure you know we. Oh, I don't know. I got on a call late, so I don't know if anybody talked about the trials and tribulations of the business, but, um, you know. It's not all success. There's the grind, grind, grind. So just grind through um, and be focused. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, and there's so many resources available. A lot of them free. If you want to learn, you can learn. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's no limit now. Well, the limitations now are a lot less than they were, you know, a decade or two ago. So, um, yeah, and there's no, no excuses, really. If you got, if you got an idea, you know, on, on something you want to remix, um, put your own swag to it. Try it. You know, you, you might actually make some money. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And and I don't know what everyone I, I don't know what everyone does on on in the chat room, but I know there's enough people on here to start up the next uh, Instagram per se. So I mean, this is this the platforms like this is what we need as well uh, to be able to connect the dots and build in the future as well. So, so thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. Uh, no problem. Thank you. And um, thank everyone for joining. I appreciate it. Um, if anybody has any questions for any of the panelists, I'll be sending out a follow-up email after the event. Uh, you can um, reach back out to me. Um, I can get it to them and um, we can keep the conversations going. Uh, but thank you, everyone. I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one and have a good rest of the evening. Salute. Yeah. Thank you.